Mr. Lee Williams, who passed away recently, um, my mom, my auntie's favorite, you know, spiritualist singer, he just recently passed. I personally didn't know he was still with us, I, but my mom said she has seen him on Facebook, because I mean, like, she is a diehard fan. Like, she cried. Like, that's how diehard. So I just want to give a shout out to he who passed. Um, Michael K. Williams. We also know he passed. Um, definitely a moment of silence there as well. But no, I didn't Michael, go to the Michael party. K, Michael K. Williams, that's that actor, ain't it? Yes. You know, and it's real crazy to me. He passed away, and they say they found drug paraphernalia, and they say they found heroin, and he is an admitted drug user from the past. I, I, I had no idea. You know, you look at people and you think they've got it all made. You know, they're talented, they're working, they're popular. And you never realize that we all have a cross to bear. I don't care if you've got a million dollars, maybe you've got a sick kid. You know, you got $2 billion, maybe you got a ki kidney problem. You know, so Michael K., they say he, you know, Oh, deed. I don't know. It's really, really sad. He was by himself. And I don't know. It reminds me of y'all stay with me here. But, you know, there's this whole urban legend that Heath Ledger died because he played the gay dude and broke back mountain. So then movies later, he after he played the Joker, you know, he he had just completed the Joker when he passed away. I think he was doing in the middle of doing Imperium Emporium or whatever that that piece of thing was. But, you know, it's an urban legend that he died because he was unable to get over playing a gay character when he was, you know, classified or or I guess related within himself as a straight man. So like during the production he met and married Michelle Williams. So they said that was the offset, you know, because him and Jake Gyllenhaal got it in so well that he offset that by marrying Michelle. Well, I don't know any of it, but it's a mean urban legend to me. And if you buy into that, then, you know, from my knowledge, you know, Michael K. Williams just played a, a gay man. I don't know. He had, you know, relationships with ladies. If you buy into that, then I think, it, okay. So my point is, these are mean urban legends that stick stigmatize the gay community. And I, I just think we need to, you know, what, what do you think, your thoughts? Like, if you buy into the Heath Ledger urban legend, do you think there is, it has anything to do with Michael K. Williams' death, with him just recently playing a gay man in, um, what is it called? That scary TV show with Lil Journey in it. Lovecraft and Lovecraft. He played a gay character. But wasn't he gay in the book, the Green Book too? And in the West, so I don't know, y'all. Just because you play somebody gay don't mean you're going to die from oh, hell. Oh, oh, no, man. Y'all, it's just... Yeah, that, that's, that's retarded. I'm getting 59. What do you yeah, think? That, that's retarded to me. I agree. So y'all leave that Heath Ledger, urban legend alone. Because it just, it's mean. I don't understand it. It's disrespectful to Michelle, to Heath's you know, uh, journey into the next life and his legacy. 
you know, and I don't want that applied to any of our brothers who have done so much for acting in this um, space and time. And Michael K definitely did a lot. Yeah. I'm not trying to bore you. I know you got, you know, you a busy man. I'm, I'm messing with you. Hey, hey, so, we got that out of the way. Let's talk about the real stuff. You oh, do they go to the party. What what party? Big boy birthday party. Corrupt performed yesterday. You think I get invited? Corrupt keeps me in the house like a damn housewife. Yeah. I'm like Big boy had a, big boy had a, had a big birthday party yesterday. Lisa didn't I didn't know. I had no idea. Wasn't invited. That's okay. I still love both of them. I know they love me. Corrupt would have had more fun if he'd have brought me along. Because <laughs> Big Boy is my boy. No, so did they have fun? I want to hear about it. Yeah. I, I ain't go. I, I ain't go because I, I was stuck out here in Vegas, but I would have went. Did they but, um, Huh? Yeah, they performed. I've been yeah. working a lot, but yeah, no, I didn't get the invite. Yeah, I heard your new manager be having you working now. I definitely would have gone because, you know, big boy is my boy. I would have gone. I didn't know. But I'm interested in hearing, you know, how it went. Although it yeah, me really too. Wasn't meant for me to be there. Some things, you know, corrupt just don't want me at. <laughs> I'm little big sis, little big sis. He treat me like wifey, but that's okay. I'll be wifey so that his real wifey can be the girlfriend. I get to go everywhere because that's how I'm supposed to be. I'll stay at home. You can keep me here and act okay. like you don't know me. But that's okay. okay. Anyway, on to more important things. Happy birthday, big boy. Hey, big boy birthday. His birthday ain't now. His birthday was a while ago. This ain't, is it this birthday? Yeah, it was yeah. yesterday. He's a Virgo? I guess so. What's today? The 10th? Taraji? Yeah. It's tomorrow. Happy birthday, T. Taraji. Happy birthday, Taraji. Mine's on the 25th. Huh? My birthday on the 25th. Uh, this coming 25th? Yeah. That's 25th. This coming. Then you're not a Virgo. You're a Libra. Yeah. Right. Oh, Jay is in the house. Jay is in the house. Jay is in the house. Yeah, I would have, you know, enjoyed going to a little fancy celebrity party and stuff, you know, having some champagnes and look at y'all, like, hi, y'all, who, who, me, yeah, but you know what I'm meant to be? I wasn't supposed to be there. I see, <laughs> okay. I see your manager keep you working now. Huh? I see your manager keep you working. You know what? It's drama, y'all. So my new manager went, took me to the new place. Then that nigga got fired. Huh? Huh? He get fired real quick. What the heck? He I don't know. He took you to a new place. I'm, I'm cool because the new place is cool. I vibe with the, the lady off top. Like me and her vibe off top. So, you know, he now he's in the car. I don't know. I'm like, how you manage to get fired? Like, honey, I like Friday, but honey, he they work in my tail. I am thankful, 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 thankful. Like, you know, it's another day, a whole mm -hmm. day, but I, I, I know he will land somewhere you know, phenomenal. I just feel some type of way, like, Ooh. why y'all had to like, why? Why can't we all get along? So yeah, that's the drama. But you know, it's no drama. Life goes on. I I, I didn't get fired. You know, she was like, yo, I, I got you. And she's the president. So I was like, and she's the one running all of the, the shots. She's the one that wants the podcast produce this podcast so i'm like oh, what, what, what are we doing then hello so i'm like okay okay and then you know he gets it 
you know, the young man that was supposed to come be on the show today, he was another one of um, the other guy's clients who stayed like I stayed. But the, the young man, the, the manager guy, kid, he didn't even like try to trip it. He was like, I'm out of there, but y'all get y'all's, you know, I'm going to find, I'll land on my feet. And, and we all wish him blessings. But that's just the way this game goes. That's not the first time that's happened to me. You know, if it was up to me, I'd still be at William Morris. But the person I was with at William Morris got fired. So they chose not to keep me. They, and she wanted to keep me because she brought me with her. So, what she want to do yeah, the podcast? Um, that's she wanna... the manager lady now. Yeah, yep. we got we gonna talk about that off the cameras. We got that, but you know, with all the drama going on on our podcast, I don't know if you on the same podcast I'm on, but you are aware we we got a punishment, right? No. Yes. We were punishment. For punishment for what? They say I asked, I said, why are we in trouble, Mr. Facebook? He said, you know what you did. Niggas. Facebook? You know what you did. Niggas. Niggas. Can you hear me, niggas? Can the niggas hear me? Now, personally. No niggas can hear me. Niggas can hear you. Oh, you you can. Okay. All right. I'm checking. I'm checking my mic. So the niggas can hear me. Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. All right. What's up, D? What's up? <laughs> Go ahead, baby. I'm sorry. I'm trying. I'm trying to figure out how we got that on point. No. They said, "You know what you did." Now I don't know what we did, but I am going to guess because at the same time, the Chicago rapper Fels Obama got in punishment from Facebook for thirty days. Because he was threatening corrupt's life and saying things. One of the little rappers we had come on here from Chicago. I personally think his thing is, this is just me and my got my psychic dress on. I think his thing is, why am I always screaming? I am so sorry. Because nobody listens to me. So psychologically, you know, when I was a little girl, my mother was like, look, I should be seen and I heard. Like, I want to be heard, motherfucker. Shit, I got shit to say. But anyway, <clears throat> I think that is not a COVID cough. That was me trying to get some air to talk to y'all. Because you got to say these things in these days and ages, especially to get a job. Anyway, I think Fells might have been upset because I did volunteer through the show to help him come out here. But when I asked his manager, to give him half on that ticket, his manager was like, no, he's not ready. I'm not bringing him nowhere. So I was like, okay, that you know better than I know. Hey, Jay the Script, how you doing? I'm sorry, man. I didn't want to interrupt. I know, I was, I was listening. I'm gonna get to T too, cause I'm like giving that, spilling it all right now. Yeah, so, spill it all, because I want to know what's going on. His barber got murdered. And I know it has something to do with being on our show and flexing, you know, and that's not what we're about. So, you know, drama led to drama led to drama. We got in trouble because his crew member, um, my boy, Forrest, what's my boy's name? The fireman. Are you talking about Hydro? Hydro. Hydro came on with his flags blaring, you know? So that's when we got in trouble. We got a three-day probation suspension, but they didn't say why. So the following week, my boy, um, the legendary Dougie off the radio, I'm not supposed to say his name, because then he and Corrupt got into it over colors. So for me, I believe I owe our listeners, our viewers an apology because I said something that I'm still trying to weigh whether it was right or wrong. And Corrupt said, is it okay to kill somebody if 
they said your mama ain't shit, your daddy ain't shit, you ain't shit, your color ain't shit, um, your mama, blah, 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 blah. And in the moment, I said, no, I guess that is a valid reason. But that's some man shit. Like, men have been known, y'all through the ages been slapping each other in the face with gloves. You've offended my honor in the park with two guns, face to face, back to back, whatever. You know, that is not what I genuinely believe. But like I said, at the same time, words are power. It's in the Bible. You know, you can go to jail if you say I got a bomb. So is it okay to, you know, snitches have to get protected because of the words that are coming out of their mouth? I don't know, but all I can say is I just because somebody says your mama ain't shit don't make it so, people. So my genuine, honest belief is we should not be killing each other. We should be coming together honoring each other and each other's mamas and we have no need for color. They can say people can say what they want. They don't know my mother. Thank you. So why would you want to you know keep I mean? over that? That I ain't, they don't know my mother. Now you, you, I don't know man. People is just retarded to me. So that is why I believe we were put on a three day suspension. Um Jay do you have forest? I mean, you deal with the people. Do you know any other reasons? Oh man, I don't know. Like uh, <laughs> Facebook, Facebook Jason, real picky know. these days. <laughs> they real picky these days. Like uh, almost anything will get you banned on Facebook now. Uh, my my cousin had a show. He's a comedian. He had a show, and I was in the comment, and I was like, "Yeah, kill them folks tonight, cuz." They they blocked my page for like three days. They said I was promoting violence. Like, so I couldn't post, I couldn't I comment on them. Like, you know, I watch, I admit, a lot of Asian soap operas. Cause I like the way they think and like they they scheme and you know, ah ha ha. So they sound like old school emperors, you know, like or somebody down south mama. Like, you know. Corrupt was saying, the reason I like my podcast is because the man's not standing over me, but the man really is. And it's even worse because he's got supreme power. So something as petty as you saying kill it was taken out of context and you against you when, you know, and and back like in the one I'm watching right now, the emperor, you know, Somebody, he told them, kill everybody because if they go against the crown. So this one lady killed the people. No, she healed. If anybody go against the crown, kill them. So the one lady healed the, like, chief of their army. And so they were like, they wanted to kill her. Because the people were like, if you don't heal them, we're going to kill the whole town. So to save the whole town, she healed the emperor. So they put her in the same like little basket as if she was somebody, you know, some servant on the corner, like trying to give them intel and help them win, you know? So to me, they're not using common sense when they're evaluating who should be, you know, right and who should be wrong. And it becomes more of a dictatorship than, you know, a a family friendly, you know, environment where we all can have a free say. Oh, yeah, this is exactly what it is. When somebody else got control over the platform. But the the irony is, is like, uh, even with you, corrupt, even with myself, it ain't like, and I, I don't want to say it and get us in no trouble. It's not like we need them. You know, we're, we're creating content. It's dope to be on a platform, but anywhere you go, People gonna go, go and watch you wherever you go. Uh, while I was banned, the way I promoted my shows, I went to open mics and performed for free and told people where my shows was gonna be at. And people still came to my shows. So right. like Facebook didn't stop me at all. You right. Know? Well, you know, for me, it's not just about 
the Facebook. You know, from week to week, we're having people coming on our show and feeling some type of way, entitled, you know, disrespected. And then I get these phone calls, which I find disrespectful because I don't think people know who corrupt is. You know what I'm saying? They're, you know, I don't think they grasp how intelligent he is and how integral he is to the game. Like, they must think he's just Snoop's flunky or something. Like, do y'all know? Let me give you just a little bit of, you know, back history. I saw some fly by. Now, I got my royal scepter, fly swatter, and I kill them. I get them, y'all, every time. Say a little prayer, bam, it's dead. So don't play with me. But, um, yes, when Snoop heard about Corrupt, he challenged Corrupt to a battle. Corrupt was so called, Snoop start asking Corrupt to join his crew through Rhyme. Like, I know I'm not as good as you, but will you join my crew? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And, yeah. and Corrupt was still going in like, nigga, I know you ain't as good as me. We'll see. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. eventually yeah. it came together because Snoop appreciated and respected the game and corrupt appreciated and respected the game enough to know to let snoop do his motherfucking thing and lay back and be a rider everybody ain't gotta be snoop that's 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 right there the sign of a king if you can roll back and support a king so they be coming on here and then they call me when they get a foot in their ass and they be like, you let him. I'm like, I let him, not I let. <laughs> I let that you got it twisted. Nah, man. Like people, people are entitled anyway. We in the we in the entitlement age because of social media. Because everybody can reach everybody now. So they think everybody in the same place. Like everything, I, everything that y'all have told me since I've been on here, all of it wasn't always positive to me. Some of it was like, hey, you need to work on this. You need to work on that. But none if, of us have a but, street with our name on it. We I, ain't I just, right. Like, what you just said is true, man, because they still tell me to work on stuff. And I think like, still stuff I we think, need to work I on. I think I'm dope. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I, I yes, still work on it. Girl. We put you up against a little girl. And I know your ego was like, you know what? I'm going to kick some. I'm going I'm to hurt y'all. You know, but you didn't. It's called show what? Business. Yeah, business. Entertainment. Yeah. It's for the people. And the people ain't just all 30 years old and over. Yeah. That little baby came on with the heat. And oh, I, hey, I got, I got, I got off on a couple of jokes. I, I ain't gonna be mad at you. People got fire nowadays. These like young, these young, these young generation, they come with that heat. You and know what I mean? They trying to, they trying to get that check. You know what I'm saying? So, so, but I, I, I do not appreciate being attacked because corrupt didn't agree with what you had to say. You know, yeah. you had ample opportunity to get your point across two hours. We're not like a little rinky dink one hour show. We give you, and then before I wrap it up, I give you another opportunity. I'm like, say what you want to say. Let's make yeah. sure that everyone is happy and smiling at the end of the day. But you yeah. call me the mediator and you want to be mad at me because I didn't go along with you. And I'm saying, I see both sides you want to put corrupt in a gangster box and corrupt is saying i'm putting you in the uncle tom you know uh whatever show podcast you know media personality box if you can put me in that broad of a box i can put you in that same broad of a box and i i'm understanding where both of them are coming from, you know? And 
He called me like, you know, he would, John Lemon, y'all want to think John Lemon is was. I'm like, ain't nobody think about no damn John Lemon. John Lemon. Da, I'm sorry. Hey, 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 what you Don say, Lemon. Jay? Th thanks for the ratings. We need all the hey. ratings. Thank you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Ain't nobody start thinking about Don Lemon till he showed his gangster colors. And I'm saying that to him. I'm like, you came on and showed your gangster colors. People probably will watch you and love you more. You didn't let corrupt just say what he wanted to say. And corrupt be playing with them. That's what they don't understand. He be laughing. He be laughing. He, he plans it he all. He friggin' uh, Machiavelli. He, <laughs> he's emperor in my TV shows. Force me so mad. My baby woke up from sleepwalking, understanding what the hell I was watching because I watched it so loud. He was like, who's got the top to the bottle? They on TV talking Mandarin, saying, where's the top to the bottle? He in another world understanding that shit. Come on, sleepwalking. Where's the top to the bottle? Well, who got the top to the bottle? Where's the bottle? I look on the TV, they got the bottle. and say, who got the top? I ain't playing with y'all. My point is, oh, get down. My point is, don't come on here, it's the forum, and think that you're going to express your point of view and not expect someone else to have a point of view that may not agree with yours. And if you don't take the time to get your point of view across, do not call me mad at me, because I didn't, it's, you know, it's been like that my whole life. It'd be I'm gonna call, I'm gonna call you like, why you do this to me, Miss Paula? Yeah, why? yeah. <laughs> you know, me and the people you know what it is it's because i laugh maybe like like people be mean to people and then the people take it out on me but i'm just a motherfucker standing there laughing you be laughing at people though but that should be funny how you not gonna laugh if you get clown i'm sorry that should be funny so they be mad at me instead of the nigga that clowned them I'm like, don't be mad at mama. Why are you mad at me? <laughs> yeah. They can't be mad at mama. That's what it is. But this is supposed to be a positive platform anyway. You know what I mean? Like, you know, we're supposed, to, we're supposed to uplift I'm just each other. You know? Yeah. That's just how I feel. I, I you know come I mean? up with some alternate options for us to submit to the boss to you know, we can't do rap anymore because oh, it's hurt my soul to hear that. It's, oh, it's, hurt my it's, it's, you know, y'all don't know how to act. Y'all, I, I don't appreciate the y'all. No. I don't appreciate yeah. the y'all. They, they don't know how to act. Yeah, it's not a, it's not a y'all thing. But this is what I will say. What I was saying about entitlement is like, you remember. When you used to, if you called somebody and you couldn't reach them, you either had to just try to call back later or you waited until they called you back. Or you went over there. Like, uh, yeah, if you, if you was really about it, you went over there. Yeah. Hey, Miss Paula, like, you a gangster, ain't you? Yeah, she gangster for real. Yeah, but she, we're in the, we're in the age like now. Your door. <laughs> yeah, we're in the age now where people can see oh, that man. you saw they call. They can see that you saw their message and they think that entitles them to you stopping whatever you're doing to talk to them. It's the same thing with these conversations. It's like you allow somebody on your platform and now they think that that's a direct line to you to call and fuss at you or tell you how they feel. And it's like, no, we, that's not where we're at with this. Well, you that know what I'm saying? had nothing to do with Hydro. Hydro don't even have corrupts line. You know, yeah. that was about Hydro trying to defend someone else, not knowing that that person did not need to be defended. Because I keep trying to tell you guys, the blessing of this is that when the kid came out to Vegas, he came, he took a plane and brought his entire family, his mom, his dad, and his siblings. Number one, no, no, people. Do not bring your family to your initial meeting. 
unless you're meeting with white people and you're 12 years old. If you're meeting with Gangsta Boogie, do not bring your family, do not bring your lawyers, do not bring your managers, do not bring your agents, because nine times out of 10, you ain't gonna sign nothing. They ain't gonna bring no damn briefcase with a damn contract. It ain't the movies. We're gonna sign it. You're a star. You got a contract. You gonna, bring, you gonna bring the contract. I'm bringing that everybody. What contract have you ever even touched? <laughs> Man, don't you gonna have Mr. You gonna have you gonna have Uncle Forrest draw up the contract and we all covered. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of pressure, Uncle Rock. You done brought who now? I done brought you I'm bringing everybody. I'm bringing my whole neighborhood. The I'm dog. Like, we on. <laughs> Your said we on. <laughs> we on. Hey, See, I, dog, I just you wanna, you wanna hear something funny? I had took a couple of people with me to the um with French, but we was we was um. How did that go? Is that over? Oh yeah, that man, we turned up. We uh, had a ball. Uh, we missed that. I know, you know I mean? but you know. So I had took a couple of people, and he whispered to me like he like damn. I was married with he you. Said, he said he said he said only women, <laughs> no guys. And I had like three people, guys with me. I, I had to look at them like, that. I'm going to work. Right. <laughs> but you know, people get up, I've had people get upset with me over that. You know, like, you know, you try to bring your makeup and hair <coughs> in to the event because you want them there. You like them, number one. Number two, you may need a little, you know, dab, dip and dab. It's up. It's up. It's up. But sometimes they be like, uh, uh-uh, you, but not them. And you feel bad because you like, but they need to ask permission they ahead. Now. I ask permission ahead. Like, if I'm about to come somewhere with Jada Street, I'm like, hey, Jeff, is it cool if I bring two of my partners? Say yes. You know what I mean? Because it differs, you know, Derek, it differs from event to event. It differs according yeah. to who's at the door. Yeah. In some instances, they would allow me to bring my folk. Somebody might be like, oh, I love you. A Friday is my jam. You know, come on, yeah, girl, please, come on in. Whereas somebody else might be like. That's why I love, that's why I love Los Angeles. Yeah. LA, LA show me so much love out here in Vegas. I'm like, bitch, I don't know. Do I know you? I'm sorry, Derek. I just I went there for a second. No, I just said LA showed me a lot of love. That's why I love Los Angeles. I love right. LA. Right. Vegas, yeah. they act so snotty on that one strip. I like, all y'all got is this one strip. You know what I mean? Right. That's why I'm like, man. But Los Angeles, yeah. yeah. Vegas. I can take you in right. the whole block with me. You know what I'm saying? It's and they're gonna let us walk right on there. You know, they ain't playing with you. Either you got money. If you don't look like it, you know, then they they sorry. If they don't know you and you ain't got no letter of references. <coughs> That's why they're going to be popping like that. You know. That's why I love Los Angeles. And you black. They ain't trying to remember. Yeah, yeah. They don't want to remember yeah. they broke. That's okay. They still like you. <laughs> they still like See, you. See, I be making sure. I be making sure my people. So the people that move with me, we all got that as an understanding. So it's like, if I'm there for my homie and I can't go somewhere, then I'm going to move around until he get freed up. They do the same thing for me. Parking lot so pimping. They call that yeah. parking lot pimping. If, yeah. you, if your chat game is tight, you can pimp anywhere. You ain't got you to be in the club. You catch a cutie by <laughs> going into the club. Your pimp game like, what, bitch, oh, y'all. You just find a nice car. And the nicest cars be by the door. Lean it's on funny. it. Not really lean on it because the damn you don't want none of that. But close enough where she might think, you know, that's your shit. But you gotta have chat. <laughs> you yeah. Have chat. Hey, Ms. Paul, Ms. Paul, how many times you don't want to corrupt show? And the first thing he looked for is you. You know what I mean? 
he looked for his father, he looked for Uncle Farn. The rest of them, they got to defend on their own. Oh my yeah. God. It's like that. And, and, and he has to send like people to get us because it's crazy. Like people, and it's, it'll be just like- we come with a hundred people, Jeff. A few people, but they be like, they want to get in that show. Like they will like knock you down and try to hold on to you. And they want to get in that show. So you got to like maneuver, like, okay, I'm going to, move the rope and you quickly come through and then you gotta and you know yeah. squeeze through a little hole and honey my car curves i ain't trying to do all of that on my date night doing all of that yeah. but i'll do all that for, for corrupt you know but yeah it is drama outside the club that's a lot going on that i'm not a big fan of so you sent us something, unlike everyone else who only asked for something. You sent us. Yes, sent out some love. Right. Yes, sent out some love. Oh, for yeah. us, is it? I want to open it on air. All right, that's dope. Yeah, yeah. I sent y'all a love package. So you want me to uh, explain what it is? Right, and then you can tell me what everything is okay oh, oh you got it okay yeah because you were telling me different designers sent things well is this uh these are different businesses oh that well, uh they they I'm sorry. yeah because it's not it's not just closed because that's why i wanted to specify as different businesses so like these are businesses that sponsor me and they helped me get to la but they also fans of my music so, you know, they wanted to make sure that uh, y'all knew that my love is y'all love. They got love for me, so they wanted to give y'all love. Matter of fact, uh, Frequency, I'm going to get some info on you. We're going to send you some stuff, too. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Most definitely. Sure. Okay. And whenever you out here or in L.A., I show you love. We come to the studio and I got you. Most deal, yeah, because I, I I plan on being back out there in the next month or so. So we gonna we gonna shake some up. All you got do, off the of camera, I give you my number. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Most deal. Call me I, anytime, I big homie. To my right. LA fam, enclosed is some love from just a few of the people that love and support me, as well as you. Thank you. For Paula and the young one, there is medium and small. For the homie D, I put larges in there. And for Gotti, I threw a double X. Extra smalls. <laughs> if he was here, you'd be like, you wouldn't say, you wouldn't say that. To him. Oh, yes, yeah, I, I would. Threw I threw Gotti. I threw Gotti a double X in there because he's tall. You know what I'm saying? He, he needs. He need his shirts to be longer. You know what I'm saying? No, nah, I like, I like, I like cracking on him. He like it long, like that. All right. Yeah, so, so. he didn't give me that, but Never I, mind. the end part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's because the last time we was on here, you was talking about uh, your, uh, your your little one's motivation to go to college. So I sent I sent him some smell good for when he go to college. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you smell good. For the lady. Today he he put on a chain. See what I'm saying? So like, that's gonna fall right in line. I, I, right in line. I, I got a, a chain from a swag bag from a jewelry store, like a, a jewelry gold people, and they give you stuff. But it was too, you know I don't wear what you got on. So I gave it to my son. He wore it to school. He like. Walking around like, mm -hmm, I'm mad. I'm like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this yeah, real? See, I, Where'd you get it from? Yeah. Okay, P.S. <laughs> uh, doing some smell good for the homie. That's what you're saying. Uh, you know, I don't know about those hand jobs. We're, I'm going to leave it alone. <laughs> I'm not going to ask because... So I did ask if he's been kissing somebody because, you know, I don't know. He, he went in to give me a kiss and he was like, 
And I was like, what is all that cow move? What is... I was like, you ain't never come around doing all that. What have you been practicing? Okay. Ombre leather. Okay, then let's. Mm. Ooh. Oh, he is going to think he's so grown with this. Yeah, I put him in the game. I I ain't sent him nothing that I wouldn't wear. Okay. So he he good. Okay, let's start from the top with the Jay Discreet tees. Yeah, you know, had to throw some of them in there. Ooh. Some of the signature tees in there. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, that's my homie from the Bellies brand. Shout out to your so, man from the Bellies. So that's Bellies. You know what I'm saying? It's a black owned brand. He do uh everything from shirts to, to leggings to baby clothes, all that. You know what I'm saying? That's my homie. You know what I'm saying? Shout so, out to Bellies. I, yeah, shout out to the Bellies brand. I got one of them joints on tonight. Yeah, it's a couple, it's oh, a yeah, couple more cool. in there. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna get you late frequency. I got you, man. We're gonna exchange anything off the camera. Yeah, he wanted to make sure y'all had some sauce. Now that's the uh that's the butterific bakery. So the the owner of the butterific bakery is one of my biggest fans. And uh they make the cookies like like your 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 grandma used to make the butter cookies, the lunchroom cookies, but they do all kind of desserts and everything. So we threw some of them in there. There's some cookies in there. Yeah. Shout out to the Butterific. Shout out to the Butterific Cafe Butter down there on South Second. Shout out to Bellies. Shout out to Bellies. Yeah. Shout out yeah, to my man, Jake Street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's are... up, guys. Like, it's like a never ending box. Like, there's no bottom. It's like a bottomless pit, guys, of just love. And that's uh, that's for my homie with the millionaire grind. So uh, the millionaire grind is who started my merchandise. He started me getting my shirts printed up and stuff. And uh, he officially inducted y'all into the grind family. That's another you know, black owned business. Cause everybody got my a t-shirt with me on it, but me. They had t-shirts at the Beyonce concert for like $200 with me saying, you ain't got to lie, Craig. And I didn't get none of that money. Yeah, we got to do something about that. We got we to gotta figure that out. Yeah, we got we to gotta go get that. Because my mom want a, my mom want a Adina shirt. Huh? It's love. My mom, she, I love you, girl. I love you, girl. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She wants a, a Dina shirt. She wants a shirt with a Dina on it. Ah, uh, grind family. Yeah, so that's and that's me and that grind. That's my big homie. And all of these brands, they the brands that helped me come to LA. That's Suavo J. So Suavo J and me, we play a lot of the same stages. He played like eight, nine instruments, and he been touring. So he goes on the tour all the time. That's his. That's his brand right there. That's my brother. Suave J. What? This is Suave. Suave J. We got the same name. I'm a Leo. That is me. That is the inner hip hop beast. Don't play with me. Yeah, so Suave J, he rep. Give me a little little cleavages, too. Yeah, you know, the little visa. Threw you the visa in there. Yeah. Yeah, Suavo rep. He played trumpet, Suavo. trombone, and you know he's just an amazing musician. He travels the world all the time. Mm-hmm. Shout out to him, man. Think... You know what I mean? Special yeah, shout, shout out. Yeah, shout out to Suavo J, man. He on the road right now. I think that's the one for the big homie. That's a, uh, I think that's Gotti jump right there. Okay, then I get it, Gotti. That's fine. Yeah, except do guys wear the V-necks? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. We wear the V-necks. 
Because we all ink up right here. We got to show them tattoos. I don't go here coming out like there. My oh, husband, no, I got I got tattoos right there. I ain't got no hair right there. Yeah, I must admit. But I don't want him doing all that taco hair. So it's not feminine for a man to wear. How many V's do y'all wear? Uh, I wear them all the time. But I got, like I said, I got a lot of ink right here. So I'll be letting my tattoos out. You know what I'm saying? Uh, what about you, Derek? I wear them. You do? Okay. Well, Daddy will rock this all day. Yeah. But you know, them, them them joints is also cool for like, Fire. when you get into the, when you get the cooler weather, you throw the long sleeves on up under them. Uh, or you throw yeah. the turtleneck on up under them. So uh, those are different segments. Let's segue into that. Thank you very much, Jay. Um, I wish we had an applause. Yeah. But yeah, 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 yeah. Do some segments. Maybe you can be in charge of hip hop wear. You know, I since got you. you tell us how to wear our t-shirts, I do agree yeah. that that is a way to wear your t-shirts in cold weather. To have um yeah. it's very preppy to put uh, you know, a shirt, not a thick shirt, but maybe a long john shirt. You know, a long sleeve shirt, cotton under a t shirt. Um, so yeah, I like that. Under there. Now, we've got a lot of people that have been sending us movies like shorts, you know, people that have taken it upon themselves and invested their own money or that had family members or whomever and, you know, invest in their dream. And they've sent us their movies. So, you know, I'll air them. Some of them are pretty long, but I will air, you know, we can air at least Top 10 three. and then do the whole, you know, my favorite, one of my favorite TV shows is, what is it, 2000? Mystery Science Theater. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. My show right now is All American. Huh? My favorite show right oh. now is All American. Well, these are shows that haven't been picked up. <laughs> these are shows that people are sending to me to ask my opinion so that they know what to fix or what to change, how to edit it so that it can get like a consultant. So yeah. I'm saying if you're sending it to me and asking my opinion, I'm going to clown it if it's fun. And then that's mystery science there. So if it's, I won't clown it if it's not, fun, if it's good. But even if I do clown it, I will still give you constructive criticism because that's what I was taught to do. That's how all my senseis taught me, you know, if I don't have anything to add to a criticism, then keep it to yourself. So that's um, an idea, if you guys are up for that, to help us recover. Oh, four says the cookie is fire. Let me get this. Never mind. I'm good. I, I got my teeth in. I can't eat a cookie right now. Okay. Sorry. Oh, yeah, they, they definitely fire though. You I you gonna enjoy them joints when you do get to them though. They do look like Girl Scout cookies. Yeah, they do look good. Butter cookies. They way better than Girl Scout cookies. Bear cookies. <laughs> they way better. Mm. So sure. little bite talk about ooh. I can still taste it. That job probably would have melted if you would if it probably would have melted without you having to chew it. It does not fire. Like but yeah, so that's an idea. Are you guys up for that? Maybe the people would like to see some of these movies that are being made, you know, for the likes of the Netflix, for the likes of the, but they're they're not being able to get them seen. You know, a lot of these film festivals only take, you know, maybe a hundred. I don't even think they take that many. Maybe like 50 out of thousands that are sent to them. You know, and the bigger festivals, you know, you're competing with the the world. You know, are we gonna go this year, Miss yeah. Paula? To where? I want to go to one of the film festivals. Uh, Sundance, I think, is the closest. But we should go to the Black Film Festival. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. When? 
When is it? I don't know. Let's look into that. I think that would be fun, huh? Yeah. Do you want to? I would like out? to go if y'all would have me. Heck yeah, that would be fun. Yeah. So yeah. doing more things geared towards film, Mike. You know, I don't know because the guy who came on and argued with corrupt before he didn't even have nothing to do with you know anything, and he had an attitude about you know gangster. So I don't know so what gonna make. looking for clout too. You know what I mean? Like if I get on here. If I get on here and argue with you, it could go viral. So some people got ulterior motives. You get what I'm saying? So sometimes, like, everybody know how to get to corrupt sometimes. Corrupt is one of them type of people. He's very smart and intelligent. But if you say something dumb, he's really going, like, what? So they hoping yeah. it'll go viral. So that's why people do dumb shit. You know what I mean? So a lot <laughs> yeah. of people come on here for clap. So oh. that's, why I, that's why I don't talk that much. I still yeah. haven't had the blessing of, you know, <laughs> the guy coming out and meeting. So when he got out here, he catfished Mads. He didn't look like what he'd been looking like, you know, in the little box. See? And it was very hard to be able to, you know, sell that in addition to <coughs> the fact that you brought your entire clan. So he looked at it as a blessing that he wouldn't have wanted to bring that, you know, bring him, have that be his first client he's bringing to corrupt. You know, so that's what Hydro didn't know is that you taking up for somebody who don't want to be saved. Don't want to be saved. He didn't want to be saved. He was happy. about the clout. <laughs> you feel me, Jack? Yeah. Everybody wants some clout nowadays, man. Thank you. OK, yeah, Derek, you was right. That was on the list. Derek needs to talk more. I don't think you need to talk more. Somebody said that. So I figured one person said they think them other people must be thinking it. You say what you say when you say it is what needs to be said. And I barely get to talk and when corrupt is around. So you talk just fine, Derek. You are our bada buoy. You produce, you bring on um, great guests. You are fun. You're silly. When you have something to say, you will say it. We also got a dark mark, guys for talking about the um, vaccines. You know, I don't know if you guys are vaccinated yet. Yet, I Pardon am. You. Yes, good. I got the Pfizer and Me too. good. Cause if you didn't know, Pfizer is the only one that has been certified fully by the FDA, the, the board um, fully approved. And so you're gonna start hearing something called community. Community. And that is the new drug that is going to be okay for you to take. It's been tested, all the good stuff. I don't know, but I'm glad I didn't go with Moderna. I went with the one that they were giving the 12 year olds. And I figured they would rather have 12 year olds take it, the good one, and people that they didn't give a hoot about is the luck of the draw, take the other one. So I went with the one they were giving the youth, because number one, my son had to take the Pfizer. They were giving all the kids the Pfizer. So I'm thinking they're gonna try to get rid of the older people. So I'm gonna take the one that they are giving him. So I'm glad I did that and Pfizer is the one that got fully um, certified. And so go out there and get it. Your local CVS, it's free. I know I've totally jumped the boat, but there are a lot of people dying, y'all. Like, it's no joke. The amount of people that are getting um, getting it. And you can say, you you know that, Jay. Right? Yeah, I know uh, most, of, most of the people that uh, I know recently, that are right now quarantining are are vaccinated. 
but they are running through a recent surge of them having it. So it's been it's been crazy on that end. Like So that's uh, like I that just, football coach guy who was vaccinated and caught it. Who was that D? He played he coached the Old Miss. Miss. Lane Kiffin. 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 Yeah, he caught it. Uh, and yeah. you know, he was vaccinated. So he didn't have to be hospitalized and he was still able to work. But you know, had he not been vaccinated, it would have been a lot worse. So no, you're right. The vaccination is not um, keeping you from contracting the disease, um, but it is ensuring that you will not be hospitalized if you do get, you know, a little sick. I, 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 I pray for us all. Keep wearing your mask, y'all. That's all I can say is, you know, it's dangerous out there in the world, right? People are, are yeah. what, selling uh, uh, vaccination cards? Like, oh, uh, vaccine's card over here. You want to buy a vaccination card? Vaccination card over here. Uh, yeah, that's a, that, that's a real thing. I've been hearing about that. That's right. kind of crazy that people doing it. Because that's a real, like, federal case if they catch you doing it. Like, you going away for it. I would, hope so. I would hope so. Um, so, you know, I'm just trying to think of other things that we can do to keep the show fun. You know, if we had great production, I would love to do sketches. You know, I come from sketch comedy. My first major gig was the Apollo Comedy Hour. Yay. Anybody remember that? No, not your children. Yeah. But, yeah, so... No, I'm an Apollo fan. We, we, um... We had fun on that show. So I get all kinds of sketch comedy ideas. So I could read them to y'all. You know, I don't know if it'd be the same. No, somebody somebody else is stealing? Yep. Okay, well. They had all yours. Some it'd, be, it'd, be fun. it'd be fun to do, but I get what you're saying. <laughs> they get the picture. Stuff that goes through my mind. Okay, fine. Um, Then... Corrupt did offer some fun games that named that sample, you know, bring people on. But the one thing that was most important that we need to figure out is guests. Like, you want me to bring on a bunch of pretty ladies. And I'm like... I want to bring on talent. So like, different talent, like athletes, stuff like that, you know what I mean? I don't know about it. So, and the people I know... You know, they, they don't want to do nobody podcast. And then they be like, I feel, I don't feel comfortable asking. And then they be like, yeah, I'll do it. And then they don't come. I don't need to do what I prefer is bring the four, who is four on here. Well, you already got me and corrupt. If somebody want to come on, I, I will gladly say, come on. But I personally do not feel comfortable asking people to come. We come on my podcast, please. Could you please come on my podcast? You know, I, I just- I got you. I, I don't we'll bring some people. So if y'all want to ask people, I'm with it. If people want to come on, I'm with it. Don't be scared of me or corrupt. You know, a lot of people that I know want to come on, I admit I won't let come on because I know we were getting in a lot of trouble and you know, like my girl VP over at Starbucks, she don't need to be coming on here with all that drama. You know, it took us a whole lifetime to get her that good job. That's one for the team, honey. Corporates, corporate money and a woman too. We ain't playing with her. So she can't come on, no. And you know, I don't want to get nobody in trouble because I got a big mouth. I'm not going to say nothing to get myself in trouble, but other people do. And like dude said, he was mad at me because of what corrupt said to him. And then he said, this was what really got me. You better be careful because you're going to lose fans because people are not going to like what corrupt said and they're going to take it out on you too. That little... I ain't neither one of y'all finna lose no fans. You or corrupt. This is a podcast. People Jesus come on here to talk. We gonna have. First of all, no, I'm not. 
No, not at all. Because if I can lose not you, even, never mind. Not even a little bit. Matter of fact, hold on. Let me see what I'm gonna do. Right. Like, you change. Let me let me sit on this proud family couch. Proud family. So that's the drama I'm talking about. Don't come over here with that. Don't come over here trying to be upset with the lady because you got you know a new butthole. Come on here willing to have an open mind and enjoy debating without wanting to beat somebody up without threatening to fight we can all have an opinion and all be heard without going to cuz you said to cuz that is ignorant and i say ignorant because it's just a lack of knowledge and it's where people go when and i think that's what he thought had happened to him he had allowed corrupt to get in his way and take him somewhere he didn't want to go which was corrupt's intention but good i'm glad that happened now we we know you gangster now we'll watch you more like we watched don lemon more because that nigga got gangster in the middle of the street when then people tried to arrest him and arrest his crew rather he was like you gonna take them you gotta take me too nigga. this my crew you know, Don Lemon said, yeah, I may be light-skinned, just like dude, but I'm I'm tough. Them light-skinned niggas, that's not true. Don Lemon was like, yeah, take me too, you know? So then we start fucking with Don Lemon. I don't know what people want from people. Let people be they self. Let them have their journey. Let them do the news they want to do. Let them be where they want to be. And let us applaud each other for each other's journey. Right? Yeah. I was tuned in. I heard the whole conversation. I thought it was a I thought it was a dope exchange. I thought it was uh it was it was good, good content. I enjoyed it. You know what I'm saying? Well, didn't it end nice? Like they was all friends and saying I love I don't know why he got mad. So we took the show off the air, y'all, because it was, he asked us to, and I do have love for him. And I respect my elders that, you know, paved the way in the game. And I respect my friends the same way. I took the, the girl who was the panty girl and I was teasing her about her panties early, early on. And Facebook was mad at me about that because they was like, we hustled that episode. That episode had like 25K. And I took it off the air because she asked me to, because my friendship with her is more important than 25k views and facebook ain't been fucking with us right since because they was like we hustled them 25k views for your ass and you took that shit off all right see how much we you know now they've been fucking with us but my point is i don't think it's that deep so it's another we have now two lost episodes that's the that ep the panty episode and this last week so i think we put it up on um youtube if you really want to see it but we did not put it on facebook because he asked us not to and that's important y'all had a whole y'all had a whole panty episode like it took me too long to get here i didn't get here to after the panty episodes was over with and stuff y'all have a panty episode so i was the panty in episode was good See, frequency wasn't even, he don't even know nothing about it. It was good too, but it wasn't nice. People like people venting and being honest, and sometimes honesty hurts and it, it hurt her feelings. And I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. And that's why I took Brother D's um, one off too. Even though I didn't agree with anything that anything that he was saying, I respect his hustle and his game. And I respect how he does it and what he's brought to the hip hop community and, you know, black people on whole. So I, I respect you, brother. I love you. And like he said, you know, he only came on because of Forrest, really. Well, he said Forrest to me, but he really meant just Forrest. They all just really like <laughs> Whatever. So um, he came through and i thank you and today our the person that was supposed to come through 
got a stomach ache. So I hope you're okay out there, Willie. Um, and hopefully he'll come back. So that's something else we discussed is bringing on a comedian. Because you know, our initial idea was Faison. Oh my God, cut you. No, remember um, Faison was supposed to do it with Man Corrupt. Yeah. And then Faison, oh. yeah, put out at the last minute. We were going to have, so then we brought Cookie. And Cookie just blew up all of a sudden. And she too famous for us now. Yay, Cookie. I can't be mad at nobody. Hustle, man. Can't be hustle. Can't, yeah. be, can't even. Can't even. Go, girl. The more she win, we win. So, you know, keep coming up with different things. Maybe you guys would like to see. Put it in our chat because we do read that. Um, subscribe. I shouldn't have to tell y'all to subscribe at this point. Uh, we're clearly going to be here. I needed to take a week to like just wash off all the negative energy that had been just coming at our show. You know, not from y'all, but from the people on the damn show. It really, I, I, it, it really hurt me that the barber died. I'm just going to let y'all know. That is the um, basis of it all. I, I, It was uh, it it was unexpected. It was uh, I remember because I was I was on them episodes, them, them back to back episodes. It was like you was asking about him because he was cool. Uh, that's when uh, Kosi was on here. Yes, Kosi. Uh, Kosi only came on to promote. She was only on for a limited time. <laughs> she was on to promote her twenty four hour extravaganza. That's my girl. Um, she just oh yeah, Sash. That's, uh yeah she's got one coming up so yeah she she was only coming on for promotion's sake and that was fun you know so we're thinking about bringing on someone else as and you jay you come on i'm like to me the more the merrier to me you know maybe in a month we can start over again because in all honesty the only people that acted a damn fool was Medicine Works' people, was Love Works. The Love Works people acted a damn fool. And none of them remembered their motto, Love Works. So all the drama from the Rooter to the Tour came from one camp. So maybe we can still, you know, think about, you know, what we want to do in that arena there are a lot of documentaries about rappers coming out you guys um that's all the buzz in hollywood right now um cypress hill has one coming out we can definitely talk about hollywood stuff um so if you've got a phenomenal friend like uh raquel you know raquel corrupt you know snoop and you want to be a part of that biopic extravaganza, uh, get in there. Who would you like to see a biopic of, Jay? Whose story? It, and it really is, you know, we've had the biopics from rappers. Um, I would, I would want to say that our boy Cube led the way. But then it's really yeah. coming from the Wu-Tang, the success of the Wu-Tang series and the way all those brothers were able to come together to create that series. Everybody, the same way they were all, y'all don't know how old school I am. I was there the first time those niggas were formed. I told y'all that before and at the dungeon, all the niggas on stage were all able to come together even today to tell their story. You know, a lot of, I'm sure the reason why a lot of these stories aren't being heard is because these egos are way too large to be able to bring it together. But, you know, RZA is genius in the way that he was able to market a documentary with the series. So yeah. we got to see, you know, the impetus behind the series by allowing us to see this documentary with all of them in the theater. I don't know if you guys saw it. Um, but it's really, really good. And I'm really proud of it. He's doing some really nice work. 
I've seen something else he did. What was that other thing we saw recently, D? Cutthroat City. Cutthroat City. Yeah, I don't really remember what it was about, but I remember it being good. That wasn't what I was planning on discussing, guys, as a as a movie mm-hmm. pick. Probably didn't have one today. Uh, but yeah, so who would you want to see if you could see any of your heroes' stories come to life? Oh, man, I got a long list. Uh, DMX, David Banner. That would be cool. Uh, I would love to see David Banner. Story. Oh my gosh, UGK, Forest Day UGK. Oh my, man, UGK all day. There, yeah. mine yeah. is Boogie Down. I was, uh, okay. he, his wife is gangster. Like I, maybe I'm selfish. I'm always looking at parts I could play. Boogie yeah. Down wife, lady, Miss Melody. I was about to say, y'all know I, I will fuck a name up and it's all in love. I saw <laughs> Y'all all call me Jai and I don't say nothing. Um, yes, yeah. yeah, Boogie Down, Miss Melody, gangster, gangster. You know, I would love to see the Boogie Down story. That would be fun. What about you, Derek? I want to see Jay-Z. Jay-Z? And the Beyonce yeah, story? I want- oh. Love to see, yeah, Master P joint. I say, but the Destiny's Child story that yeah. would be fun, you know. Yeah, uh, them, those two it, girls it, got kicked off the bus, or the moms got kicked. Somebody got kicked off the bus. Somebody got kicked. Off. I want to know why y'all. Kicked and if we go outside of rep, if we go outside of rep, I want to see uh maybe Babyface man. Folks don't talk about Babyface enough. It's a lot of careers because of Babyface. I would love to see that story. You would love to see that story? He would be so slick with it. Like, it just seemed like he would just be, like, sliding across the screen. <laughs> like, I, I would agree. like to see Babyface as a vampire. No diss to Babyface, but he got that swag. Like, yeah. look into my eyes. Yeah. Like, he glides when he walks. Like that's, I, ain't mad at I, I don't want to see Bayface play Bayface. Yeah. I don't want to see no nobody else to play Bayface. They be they be trying to put uh, berries and juices in their hair, and it it be an entrepreneur. Bayface got good hair. Y'all better find somebody chop it with hair like Derek, right? Derek, you all slim up and play Bayface. Roll of a mm-hmm. lifetime. Yeah. Derek. No, you don't have that face. I don't look, I don't look. You got hair like Bay Face. Show the people your hair, Derek. You got that mass of hair. Yeah, it it looked nappy from a distance right now, y'all, but it's all pretty and curly and stuff. Just like Jack, you know. Babyface baby face might be gangster as hell behind closed doors. He might be backhanded, folks. You sing the song right, damn it. So, have you ever met Babyface this far? Yes, I have. He's a nice, nice gentleman. Yes, I have. Um, what about, see, you made me forget. I was going to say, um, see, why y'all, y'all know Mama Brain just listen to me trying to think of something. What were we, we were just talking about. So I hate that brain fart. Oh, I know who people want to say, see, but I had thought about someone. Who was the last person you just asked me before? Before, after Bayface, you said someone else. No, yeah, I was talking about uh, the Destiny Def- Child. Yes, um, and I want to get uh, like my ideas that I'm gonna turn into something. But uh, uh, okay, okay, right. You know my my A one ideas, but there are a lot of people out there that have stories that I would like, oh, R. Kelly. That's who I was going to say. You talking about people pimp slapping. Yeah. You talking about somebody getting slapped and beat up or something. I'm like, you want to see R. Kelly life story. Don't lie. Tell the truth. Do you or do you not want to see R. Kelly? Everybody story? wants to see R. Kelly life story. I'll be a pedoph- I, even if an 18-year-old plays the part, don't you think it's a little pedophilia 
to do a movie about a possible alleged pedophile person? I mean, it, I don't know. It, uh, it's it's worst worst movies have been made, but you know, I, that part. I watched I watched the uh, I watched the Whitney Houston movie that they made. Well, she, and, uh, she wasn't tinkling on people. Nah, she wasn't, but like the way they portray her uh, as far as behind the scenes, if if you never fed into the rumors and you just watched that movie as just a Whitney fan, you left that junk with your soul hurt because they was, was raw sad. in that junk. It was sad, very they, sad. Yeah, they had the scene where they had Bobby Brown overdosing and she just stepped over him. Like, all right, I'm going to just leave you down there. I'm going to go ahead and go on about my business. Like, they was cold-blooded in that junk. Well, you know, crack will make you do some things. What did, what did Rick James say? Cocaine is a hell of a drug. Yeah, cocaine is a hell of a drug. <laughs> It'll make you hey. step over folk. And that is another yeah. thing. People, if y'all can hear me, I'm talking to you. I've never understood the concept of a drug that make you look crazy. Now, maybe it's because I'm, I don't know, maybe I could see it. I might be looking see it. I don't want to look no crazier than I already do without all this makeup and hair on. Y'all don't know what that look, you know what that look like. Y'all don't know what that look like. I don't need no extra help looking a hot mess. I don't understand why people take crack and heroin is the high better than the outcome like i know at some point uh, it becomes dependent but why do you do it in the first place uh it depends on who you ask because i don't have family yeah, members that, that came question. back from it yeah i don't have family members that came back from it so the <laughs> the coldest thing i ever heard go ahead Oh saying? yeah, the coldest thing I ever heard was having a conversation with somebody about uh coke. And I was like, what made you what made you try coke? And right hand to God, he was like, Man, I I ain't had nothing else to do. Like he came from a real well off family. He right. was like, Man, I got I got bored. I just tried it. I was like, damn. Like, you know what I'm saying? It took him some years to shake it. Like of excitement to life. Or yeah. Like with something like heroin, maybe in a way to escape or reach another plateau. I don't know. But it seems to me like it makes you vulnerable to demons, not just in a literal sense, but also the, the demons that possess the men who sell it to you, who cut it with fentanyl or whatever they do that and then you know you're like oh i got a bad batch no you're dead or you almost died and i i just i i just think it's a tool to entrap and to kill and nothing comes good from it and i i do understand that it comes from loneliness and boredom escapism a desire to have control even though you lose control there's no such thing as you having control i don't give a shit what you think you're gonna do how you know we have no control so i just you know i don't want our brother's death to go unfelt and unheard and us not learn something even if it's it looked kind of shaded to me I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I said it looked kind of shady to me. That's all I'm saying because I don't know if it if there was some. I don't know. I don't know. They said they found him by himself with the paraphernalia. Look kind of. I don't know. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how it works. Oh, uh, we talking about uh, the big homie? You talking about yeah, uh, Michael? Kind of way. Sorry, it just looked kind of shady to me. I don't know. I'm just saying. Do people still do that? I guess if you die, you don't have time to clean up your mess. No, you don't. Uh, that's a sad one too, man. That was a heavy loss, man. He was one of the great ones as far as actors. He's one of the great ones, definitely. Yeah, that really, really hurt. So come on guys, let's, um, 
And he had said in the past that he had a hard road, you know, with getting off and on the wagon. So he did, you know, let us know it was something that had been something he was struggling with. I just want you guys, you young ones, and, you know, just know, don't put your life in someone else's hands. You know, I, yeah, I go to farm, but, you know, I don't know. It's not like that. It's different. You know, when, when you're ordering those types of chemicals, they're coming from overseas. You know, the same people that, you know, want to make us sick with diseases and kill us are the same people sending heroin over to America. Those poppies. <clears throat> Sorry, guys, it's really. <laughs> you know, I, I'm just saying. There's a conspiracy. And they're wiping people out and they're starting with people who are allowing themselves, who are putting their lives in someone else's hands. You're putting your life in someone else's hands when you are taking their drugs and assuming that they are your friend and they know what's in it. They don't know what's in it. Because the number one rule is don't get high on your own supply. So they don't, they didn't try it. They don't know. Yeah. So I don't know. Seem like all that stuff is coming from somewhere else, coming over here, not being cut right. And they're putting that stuff in it somewhere else. And it's a conspiracy. And it's been a conspiracy to kill. And if you saw the Billie Holiday story, um, it's a conspiracy to kill our our talented people. So stop. Yeah. I don't know how to tell you other than don't start. And if you already started, I don't know what you're going to do. You, you better go to an outhouse and sweat it out. Y'all better join the Scientologies. The Scientologies will sweat that shit out of your ass real quick. You better trust and believe. Yeah. They get that demon out your ass. So if you are doing it, stop because there's things we got to do right now, people. Yeah, and we can't be all hide up and dead doing them, right? So keep it moving. All right. So did you guys all see what anybody got? What corrupt always has a fun topic. I keep talking about R. Kelly, but. Have you guys been following the trial? The no. R. Kelly trial? I, no. I have not. Like uh I've been I've been moving around. I, I know the latest one of the latest developments was uh uh somebody was trying to say that he, he was confessing to actively giving giving people STDs or something like that. Uh but you know that's that's always the, the, the headlines. I don't know how true it is. I didn't follow it down the rabbit hole, but nope. I wasn't following him at all. I don't think they're reporting it. I think it's a closed trial. And the only thing I heard was some brother said he made him suck him pee pee. At oh, all man. things that they reported, that was the one thing that was really the headline. It's kind of shocking that somebody as high profile as a R. Kelly would be just somewhere in general population in jail. I would have thought that that might not have went that way, but you know, jail is jail, you know? So I ain't no telling how that's been playing out. Uh, completely unrelated, but still related. Uh, all Aaliyah's music has been released to all the streaming sites after all this time. So you can go- related. You always get the music news. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. Yeah, so you can now go listen to Aaliyah's albums on Spotify and different streaming sites because they weren't there. You know, they had a whole battle with the, the family about getting their music out. So, people, so it's there now. So if you go look it up, you can go play the, the Aaliyah hits now. Oh, that's I'm dope. sorry I had to bring it up in conjunction with R. Kelly, but it just made I love Aaliyah. You know, I did get an opportunity to meet her. And, you know, she was a sweetie. She was a sweetie. 
I really, really loved her. Um, she was a really, really nice young lady. And we talked about her role in um, which I think she totally killed um, uh, the queen of the dam. Like, I, like yeah. that's, you know, imitatable. Like that's just the, the control, that muscle control of the hips, you know, as she walked in and she just floated, you know, I'm queen. Yes. Um, so uh, back to, yes, what we were saying. Um, you, what were we saying? You were talking about. I was just saying that they, they, uh, they uh, released all of her music to streaming. Well, that, you know, that, that's been a fight because her fans been wanting their music to be available. And I'm not sure who it was. I'm not sure if it was her dad or somebody in her family. They was holding it up from being able to be released to the streaming site. So over the past week, right, it's, it's been released. Because it's free? Probably. Uh, you know, streaming don't really make a whole lot of money until you get into the millions of streams. Well, speaking so, of you free, know, Britney is free. Everybody who was down for the free yeah. bit cause. Yeah. yeah, Britney can now have somebody else tell her how to spend her money. So there. Yeah. <laughs> Dad. Yeah. Dad. You can't tell yeah. me nothing. I'm just saying. Um, you but, got plenty of money to spend, too. Yeah. Hey, if I had money like that, trust and believe, I would give it all away. So you probably have to have somebody in control. We all need a money manager. Don't think my jokes is serious. I just baby jokes. If you got $2, you better manage them or you will have no dollars tomorrow, okay? Everybody, if once you get any kind of little money, you definitely could use a money manager. And, you know, there is nothing wrong with that. Go, Brittany. Um, everybody has a money manager. So eat those chips. Yes. So um, what about our girl? The running girl. Um What's our running girl? She lost. Shikari. Shikari. Ah, uh, Shikari. And let her go ahead and yeah. run. I Shikari. love Shikari, man. I mean, uh, her kids look bad, though. Well, no, nah, I think Shikari's a life lesson. I think she's a lesson well, in... See, the problem. Don't be life lesson in we heads because she lost her race. So nah, this, don't it's not because she lost. Us. And no, we can't run fast because we too high. We the damn rabbit in the hair. She's a life lesson because a million people was on her side for smoking weed until she lost. That's She's a life lesson that people don't really be in your corner. They just act like they be in your corner. Because all them same people turned on her. Because she should have been taught. First of all, when you lose, be humble, rabbit. You already in trouble for smoking. Now you're making us we as look bad, like we slow, like we uh oh. Jamaican <laughs> girls and they got all the weed in the world. Them Jamaican girls yeah. ain't smoking it. I don't see I don't believe us, I don't believe she made we heads look bad because she went to the Olympics. So all the people right. that's talking shit about her would never make it to the Olympics. She like, didn't go to the, the Olympics. She was not high. Then she went to the Olympics. Then she got high. And then got kicked out of the Olympics. And then performed not so well. So she makes weed heads look bad in the fact that she was never called on being a weed head prior to her doing great, winning all her races, every race, fancy, fancy, fancy. Then she smokes some weed, then she lose. Yeah. You know, so it, it makes us look bad. Like you said, if she had smoked some weed and won, yeah, we'd all be like, yeah, see, we has, we can, we run too. But yeah. she smoked some weed and lost. And it, it's not about the weed for me, to me, and for me, for her. I think she's dealing with the loss still. Yeah, and I it's agree. all mental. You know, it's not that she can't, like you said, because she's there. Right now, she has to get over that that anger, that pain, so that she can free all of that and run her her, her race. Um, I, I, I don't agree. 
I don't think it has anything to do with the weed. I think it was a really, really hard loss for her. But yeah, the point was, yeah, I do yeah. think, yeah, weed heads, I don't know, maybe maybe you shouldn't smoke and try to run a race. I don't know, I'm just saying. I'm going to try it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be our case study right there. That's going to be our case study. want to see it. I want to see it go down. Okay, so then it's time for me to give my movie review and then you can do your music. Was your music already? Uh, Aaliyah has her album. Was that your music? I just want, yeah, I just wanted to talk about that because I was happy about that. Like, uh, uh, yeah, I, actually just, yeah. I just watched the movie that came out today. Uh, uh, Malignant came out today. And what is that? Malignant is a malignant is a movie that was made by the, the guy that made the conjuring and annabelle and Ooh, all the, the movies i love me a scurry movie honey tell me about it what's yeah. going on in it it's a pretty cool movie it's uh it's uh basically this female and all these people are dying around her and she's and they're trying to figure out what's the connection but uh it's a real cool twist to it it's, it's not something that you've seen in a lot of movies prior to it. So I don't want to get too much away. Right. But it's, def it's definitely worth watching, though. Okay. It's called Malignant. We'll check out Malignant. Forrest, what's the last scary movie we saw we were really impressed with? No. He's talking about Friday the 13th, part two. Uh, now. But, you know, Candy Candyman is out now, too. I, I haven't seen that one yet. Definitely want to see that. My girl... Vanessa, shout out. To, Vanessa will come on our show. That's my that's my ride or die. That's my rock a bye, baby. Man, I would love to uh to hear her thoughts. Cause that's she was in the original Candy Man. We're playing. That's the diva. The diva. Um She ain't aged either. That's what I am thinking of. Yes. So yes, that is out. But something I was watching, um, a good one. But the one I decided to talk about was. Sweet Tooth. Did y'all see Sweet Tooth? With, I haven't seen Sweet Tooth yet. With that man uh, that's married to um, Lisa Bonet. Lisa Bonet's husband. What's his name? Jason Momoa. Now, at first, I was thinking, you know, Jason Momoa reminds me of The Rock. Okay. But Jason Momoa, he always played the same, like, dirty-looking person. Like, he, he don't want to like, take a bath for his movie, so he whatever he's in, he going to look like the Aquaman. So he, he, he reminded me of the Aquaman in his movie. He had like, some Aquaman lines. Remember for a did he say a couple of Aquaman lines? Aquaman, I'm going to get him. I don't know. But, you know, so I was thinking maybe he needed the rocks management so he could you know maybe they they both got that muscle head kind of look they need yeah. you know but jason momoa picks great parts like i was really impressed with his crying scenes because it kind of reminded me of kevin hart's crying movie when his wife dies but those crying scenes was different yeah you talking but, about the, the recent Kevin Hart movie where he like a dad? Yes, that's what I'm talking about. It reminds you of that. That's an amazing movie. That, yeah. well, I'm glad you think that. I thought it was amazing too. Except them crying scenes. I thought the baby, <laughs> my baby was amazing. Both my babies was amazing. I don't think yeah. my I don't think they let my baby baby do her thing. Not the baby baby, but the baby do her thing. I don't think they built up her character enough for us to love the wife. Like, I think they could have given us a little bit more in terms of, you know, helping us understand the love that he had for this woman. But anyway, we talking about Jason Momomo. He, I was able to see some real man crying. You know, like he a big old, big old man was crying. You know, I wasn't like, like, oh, uh, crying with him. But I was like, that's some nice work. He is really giving you nice work. 
But then when you think of, he looked the same as he looked in Game of Thrones when he was the king of the naked people, the black people, yeah. the horse people, <laughs> the dragon people, somebody, he was the king of the cutie pies. Well, he was the king of the cutie pies. He ain't changed his look yet. But then you got to remember, Lisa Bonet don't change her look. She looked the same in Dragonheart as she looked in Cosby Show. Angel Heart. Thank you, y'all. She looked the same in Angel Heart as she looks in the Cosby Show. They really want to be earthy. So, you know, I still think he could use some, but then I saw Jumanji once again. And I don't know what that was. So he may not need to go with whoever represents uh, Rock, who I think is his wife. Yeah. But I really think Jason Momoa is a great actor. I would like to see him, um, even in the, I, I see, same dirty look. Maybe he don't want to cut his hair. He's saying he needs to do Samson and the damn Lila. That's the damn movie <laughs> that man needs to do. You hear I like, me, I like, Mama? I like you know, the old guy from Taken. Y'all don't be jealous, but I had an opportunity to sit next to Lisa Bonet. Anybody gonna ask? Yeah, we're a little jealous. We're a little jealous. We're a little jealous. Well, well yeah, she was sitting next to me, honey. And I was like, who Lisa Bonet is sitting next to me? Because you know. We both got the opportunity to be on a show called Ray Donovan. Hey, Ray Donovan, on the same season. So they showed me love because they must have knew I was in love. Who wasn't in love? With Dan, look, like she said, Lisa Dan Bonet. So yeah, honey, through the whole damn uh, table read. Lisa Can Bonet. Can I ask you a question, Ms. Paula? Yes. What, what was your favorite movie that you played at? Your, your favorite, favorite movie that you played at? Your favorite role that you played? Yeah. You think the proud family? Well, the proud family is what I'm most proud of because it's for the babies. But I honestly have to say it was Hustle and Flow because I met my husband on that set. And during the making of that movie, we were all family. You know, and I do miss John and, you know, and everybody else. So those were good yeah, times. So, so, were- uh, so, did, so did DJ ease up on you with that Memphis game? Is it hit you with that Memphis game? That's really what it was, wasn't it? Yes. She <laughs> <laughs> uh, didn't even look at the camera. <laughs> She didn't even look at the camera when I answered it. She was down like, yeah, that's how it went. Yeah, that's what's up, D. One time for D, man. He'll never come yeah. on the podcast, but one time for D in the background. He probably I like, get, yeah, I get it right. to him. Yeah. Come on back. You know, he ain't he ain't bought it for the wrong reasons. He, um, he feels like this is his podcast. Even though we're on it, he really takes ownership. So... Uh, can so, niggas hear me? Uh, can the niggas hear me? Niggas, niggas in the house. Can y'all yes, hear me? We hear you. Yeah, yeah. Jay, what's up, man? Nah, she 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 eased up on me, dog. Why are you talking? T- ah. I was at work. I was working, being a good employee. Ah. Why are you talking to Bill? You employee. You were. I was. I was. Here she was employee. in a stripper uniform. Dancing her ass off in front of me. I was doing uh-huh. a screen test. It's called a screen test, Jay. I was doing my yeah. screen test, and it was supposed to be a closed set. I turn around, this nigga up against the wall like this. Hey, I already know. I already know. Like, yeah, yeah. Let me go holler at you right quick. Damn you. How dare you? <laughs> this, this, this is me. This is me. Nobody else yeah. gonna get. No. Nobody, yeah. nobody else gonna get hurt. This is all me. Yeah. That's what you were yeah. saying. I'm the forest. Cause I turned around and I was like, "Who is?" Uh, 
Well, keep going. <laughs> oh, man. Then they made him my bodyguard. Because yeah. in Memphis, you know, we really did go to those real shake joints, you know. And I really did take um, classes from one of the best strippers in Memphis. And so he went with me. And I was once again given the task to, um, John made me get on during an afternoon um, shift. And I had to see how much money. If I could make yeah, it. We money. did the uh, King of Clubs on Brooks Road. Okay, oh. yeah, I know exactly where that, I know where that was. It's not there no more. Right, it oh. yeah, that's what it was. Uh, and to go into the King of Clubs, for lunch, back when we were making that, you saw me, you know, swinging around the pole and doing all the, the stuff that my girl had taught me. What was her name, D? Do you remember? Um, no, I can't remember this. No. <clears throat> she was fine. She was fine. She knows you know who you are. Yes. Hey, yeah, you yeah. Find up on. So, oh, yeah. Anyway, uh, there's my mama. Change your look, baby. I don't know. I mean, it's cute. I'm just saying, if you gonna be everybody looking grungy, and I understand because Lisa Bonet, she be everybody looking grungy too, but it kind of limits you. Lisa Bonet can do more with her. She been around like we will forget her. We love her. Y'all, I sat, did I tell y'all I sat next to Lisa Bonet at the table, read? Yeah. She smelled good too, y'all. <laughs> I was like, it's so nice. I wasn't. I wanted to, but I wasn't. <laughs> but I, I was thankful that y'all sat me next to Lisa for now. I'll never forget that. So, um, yeah, my mama, I don't know. Maybe do her. <clears throat> once again, do Samson and Delilah. You need to do some period pieces. Samson, Delilah, and Hercules. You need to bring Hercules back and Samson and Delilah. For real, Samson and Delilah. That's what you need to do. And um, anything you, so yeah, other than that, and you know, it was seeming a little edible from the trailers, but once I watched it, it was cute. You know, go on to watch Sweet Tooth. No, go on and watch it, it was cute. Uh, I will be watching Malignant myself though. That sounds Check it out. fun. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's worth watching. It was, uh, it, was, it was a new take on something that, cause I'm a horror movie guy. So like Ooh. the twist, Ooh. the twist was something I wasn't expecting. So like it's gonna love be. Those. I, I love those unexpected twists. So let us know. Well, we only have time for the Aaliyah. Now y'all know. Go get Aaliyah. My fan ran out of uh, air right at the end. Thank you, Jay, for all that great swag. Um, happy belated birthday, big boy. Sorry, I Thank you. Yeah. Speaking of big boy, did y'all hear about all the drama with uh uh speaking of big boy Andre and Drake and Kanye? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's the other news. Uh Drake's album came. Right. So I appreciated Andre's verse. You know, did y'all hear it? Did y'all listen to Andre's verse? That Kanye, yeah, it was, it was, from the it was beautiful. It was beautiful. It hurt my feet. Yeah. Beautiful. I don't know why Kanye, Kanye, why did you do that, Kanye? But well, Kanye, Kanye didn't put the song out. Drake put the song out. Right. I don't know how Drake got it because Kanye wasn't going. Because that's Drake. Even though yeah. Kanye sold more than Drake. So. Drake said he put it out because Kanye wasn't going to, and he want, he felt it needed to be heard. And I'm thankful because I agree. Um, it needed to be heard. I mean, uh, I think Kanye, I think Kanye was doing right by not putting it out because, you know, Andre gave him a verse for a song that was really like referencing his mom and, you know, talking about both of their moms. And I think the verse that Kanye had on it, I think Kanye listened to it and realized he was sending shots on the song that it didn't make sense. His verse didn't make sense next to Andre verse. Andre okay. verse was beautiful. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ding, 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 ding. 
Thank you so much, Jay. So explain it to the people once again, because I never, I didn't hear the song. All I heard yeah, so, was Jake so, being Jake, Drake being messy. So, yeah, so as an artist, as an artist, you get a feature from an artist. Right, and you're looking yeah. at it from the bigger picture perspective. It's not about well, look, yeah. me being messy. If your performance is not in the context of the movie, your ass gonna end up on the editing room floor. And it's yeah. not even if even like, if it's your movie, yeah, even if it's your movie. Like so, if you Kanye, Kanye reaches out to Andre three thousand and say, "Hey, I got this song, you know, uh, and you know I lost my mom. We gonna talk about our moms on this song." And Andre sent you this beautiful verse. Then. In the midst of you going back and forth with Drake, you put this verse on there that's got these shots at Drake. It's real aggressive. And you decide, you know what? Say what? You take a shot to Drake in your mama song. Yeah, but that's the thing. Why is you take a shot to Drake in your mama song? That's a whole nother I, song. Yeah, but I think with Kanye, Kanye don't work like that. I think Kanye emotions take over. So he probably already had the verse. Say what? That's a whole nother song. If you feel in some type of way and you got to get it on wax and you now you want this track, you that's a whole nother song. That's no longer the mama song. Yeah, and that's why I think Kanye didn't put it out. It's because he listened to it and realized, hey, they man. In the wrong direction. So Kanye yeah. didn't put the song out, period. No, Drake put the song out. Okay, okay. That okay. See, you know what? Yeah, Drake Drake leaked the song. Black people, something wrong with y'all. See, I y'all had me thinking. I'm sorry, Kanye. I'm woman enough. I don't know why Drake leaked it though. That's my honey, Kanye. Me and Kanye. Remember this Kanye? We was modeling for Queen Latifah. <laughs> I don't know why he leaked the song either. It don't make sense. He to me. The cause he hating because Kanye must have got in that ass. Now. Let's start with, if Kanye, I thought Kanye put the song out and then left and left Andre off. And then I would have had some problems with that because y'all know Andre, y'all saw Idlewild. Y'all know them as my boys. Yeah. You saw me introduce them to the world and Soul Train, on Soul Train. When I that's, was one of my, that's one of my favorite roles of yours is the Idlewild role. But I like, I like they, you in Idlewild. Thank they you. killing Kanye right now, no, Dre. Everybody huh? killing Kanye. Talk about they he left him off the song from Chris Brown, the soldier. Everybody. Yeah, but you know they're making it women. So, because I'm I'm the less knowledgeable. Let me just ask the questions. I know y'all don't like me ask questions. I'm gonna ask my questions. So the song oh, no, we're gonna answer all your questions. The song was never released. It's not like Kanye put the song all out and then just left. Left uh, three thousand Andre out, off the track. He he cut the track completely off his album. Yeah, yeah, he, he cut the song completely, and I don't know how Drake got the song, but Drake is the That's person that released. The song. Hey, bitch ass engineer, probably or some probably something like this. And a hoe can be a man or a woman was in there while they were setting it down, and somebody heard it and sent it. Cause yeah. I can't see Andre sending it. Then uh, to frequency, like as far as like the people that got left off the album. So I know, and I know you know this too, cause you're a producer. When I'm when I'm in album mode, I just work with people. I get a bunch of features. When I start putting the album together, if it don't sound like it fit, it's not gonna go on the album. So. The album that Kanye released almost listens like a gospel album. So it makes sense why he took some features off. It's like, hey, when we was doing this song, that was cool. But it don't fit the rest of this song. Drama with Drake big head ass on my album. And Drake <laughs> not trying to it's, not, it's, not, it's not just Drake though. It's, it's not always Drake. about a girl. He probably trying to get at camp. It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not Drake. He left Chris Brown off. He left Soldier Boy on. Yeah. Because there probably was some bullshit songs that wasn't in the Jesus mode that Kanye is traveling on. Don't yeah. know, that's what I'm saying. We don't want nobody coming on here, Fails Obama, with no bullshit. 
Kanye did not want that on his album. He's, he's yeah. cleansing himself of the bullshit. So he fucked it up by letting that shit leak and seep onto the track. So he cut the track off the album, cut the Chris Brown, shaking my ass and fucking hoes track off. Hold on, hold on. That's my brother now. But he only makes songs about shaking his ass. That, fuck that's my off. brother, Miss Paul. I'm not, what do that in my line? Do we make brother. about anything other than shaking his ass and fucking hoes? Oh, I didn't have nothing wrong with those two I'm a huge you know fan yeah. of his little ass. I'm just saying, that's what he makes songs about. So I can only imagine what the song was about. And if, yeah. if Jeezy want to be in a whole new direction with Jesus, Jesus shook his ass and fucked with them hoes, but he don't want to put that on an album. He ain't put that in the Bible. He ain't tell y'all that. He put his little clues of it. I, I think the only you don't, problem you don't, is... You don't, waste a, you don't waste a Chris Brown feature. But see, this is the thing. I think the only problem is is how big Kanye is. Who don't? Some little girl? Who don't waste the Chris Brown feature? Anybody. You don't waste Who? the Chris Brown feature? Anybody. With Anybody that's in the game? Why would you waste the Chris Brown feature? Kanye. 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 Is it Kanye? Yeah, I think I think yeah, I think it's a different conversation when we're talking about Kanye. Uh, we're talking about Kanye. Like we not talking I think when uh yeah. We're not talking about. I think it's only an girl. issue. Shout out to my good girls. Uh, we ain't talking. I think, about... I think it's only an issue because of how big Kanye is. It's only an issue because of how big Kanye. Is. If it was anybody else that left a Chris Brown verse off, he wouldn't say nothing because one, he already been and got his money. He'll just go and do something else. That's like saying, you know, it's to me, it's not even about how big he is. But how big he is, is a direct result of how cold he is, how talented he is, how um, his mind thinks differently from everyone else's, which is a blessing and a curse. But, you know, it's gonna leave us with a legend of, of phenomenal work. You know, wherever he is in his life, he's going to express it through his art. And I think it's his choice to put who he wants on that journey on. And as cold as Chris Brown is, if he was feeling some type of way in that moment and he changed the type of way he was feeling when the album came out, it is what it is. It ain't personal. It's only yeah. personal because it's his personal journey. And Chris Brown got his own album. Chris Brown could be on his own album, all the whole songs. Every single song, Chris Brown can shake his boot and fuck some hoes. And every single song, you don't have to worry about being on Kanye's album because Chris Brown gonna do his own thing and go triple platinum. So there we have it. Oh. Shout out to Chris. Shout, Shout out, out to, to TV. Shout out to Big Drake. Out to the Thank you, everyone. Bally Belly for the stuff. I'm gonna get on um, us bringing you quality entertainment. I don't give a shit if it's quality or not. I will be here every Friday talking shit. If you want to see it, I'll see you there. Peace. So, I